wow guys it has been a skinny minute since i've done a video for you guys but uh i just got off doing a periscope and i was super interested in the topic that i was talking about so i figured i'd bring it to y'all here on youtube or facebook depending on how you're watching it and yeah so let's just get right into it so for those of you who don't know, my name is Nancy and I am an entomologist and I live in Ecuador. Sometimes I'm in Quito, sometimes I'm out in the jungle, but you know, I live in Ecuador. So today we're going to be talking about how insects handle the cold. Before we get too far into how insects handle the cold, I want you to subscribe if you like learning about bugs. So subscribe and make sure that little bell icon is turned on so that way you get notified when I post since I apparently seem to, to upload videos at seemingly random times. So you will always know when I post if it's, if it's, you know, if you have your notifications turned on because I don't have a set schedule yet. So let's talk about the transition in between like it's super really hot and it's super, super really cold, like kind of early spring, late fall. The first thing you can do is just have fuzz or hair or fur and you'll see that in a lot of bumblebees especially that's why bumblebees are fluffy it's to help keep them warm the second thing you can do is shiver lots of insects shiver lots of bees shiver moths shiver you shiver i shiver we all just shiver when we get cold so if you shiver and in addition you have fluff or fur on you that gives you a competitive advantage because you can either be out later at night, for example, or you can be out earlier in the season or later in the season. You can see this in a lot of bumblebees or solitary bees. They will come out earlier in the spring. They'll be out like earlier than anything else. And they can do that because they can handle the cold because they're shivering when it's cold and they also have fur to help them or hair with that to help them with insulation. So let's talk about those insects that you can see on snow banks hopping around or just in the snow in general or when it's really cold in winter or living in the Arctic Circle. So let's talk about them. There are some insects, for example, there's the snow scorpion fly, which is not a scorpion and is not a fly. And sometimes they're also called snow fleas and they're not fleas either, it's complicated. Anyway, it's said that just the heat from your hand can kill these insects because they are so evolved and adapted to handle the cold. So let's talk about those adaptations. The first strategy you can do to handle the cold is literally just to freeze solid. And as crazy as that sounds, it's literally called freeze tolerant because you are tolerant of freezing. In North America, woolly bears are the, probably the most common and well-known example of them. However, if you want a non-insect example, wood frogs also do this in North America. However, you can see examples in North America. This type of strategy to handle the cold is better seen in the Southern Hemisphere where winters aren't quite as long and usually aren't, usually aren't quite as intense. If you're not tolerating freezing solid, you are avoiding free, being frozen solid. And this has the proper name of freeze avoidance because you don't want to freeze solid, so you are avoiding freezing. And this strategy is most often found in the Northern Hemisphere where winters are traditionally longer and harsher and you get colder temperatures. There's a couple simple ways you can avoid freezing and those are to literally leave, to just get out. And the most kind of extreme example is to migrate. So you have the monarch butterflies in Ecuador where I live, we have monarch butterflies, but ours are non-migratory. But the common monarch story is that they migrate from Mexico to Canada, Canada and then back again. And they do that like birds, simply just to avoid the cold. You don't have to deal with it physiologically or biologically if you literally just go to a different country where it's not cold. That's what I did. Worked well for me. You can also avoid the cold by hibernating. So that's why box elder bugs and ladybugs, which are beetles and not bugs, but anyway, you get the point. But that's why these insects, you often find them in your home right around the end of fall or sometimes at the beginning of spring because these insects are hibernating in your house. So that way they can avoid the cold and they can also avoid moisture, which will help them avoid freezing because if they freeze, they will die. 
Okay, so now let's get into some of the more biological and physiological adaptations. I would consider the first two behavioral, like you're just leaving. And these now we're getting into what is your body producing? What is your body going through to actually help you, you know, not die? So the first thing is to create a barrier. Uh, some insects produce a waxy cuticle and some insects like silkworm moths will create silk around their pupa, also called the cocoon. So if you are creating waxy substances on your exoskeleton, this helps water bead off of you and fall off of you and so that prevents it from turning into ice if it's literally not on your body. And we think that the hair or the silk from the silkworm moths isn't necessarily preventing or helping you stay much warmer. It may act as a buffer if it gets cold really, really quickly. It may help you slow down in your eventual cooling of the body, but it's not gonna stop it entirely. We think that it's mainly more like a barrier. So if any moisture happens to fall on the insect, it will fall onto the silk and the ice crystals will form on the silk and not on the delicate pupa inside. You can also create antifreeze in a couple different ways. The first is with sugars and alcohols. Glycerol is the most common, and that is also what we use in our cars for antifreeze. So insects and cars have more in common than you ever thought they did. Surprise. So insects produce these sugars and these alcohols, mainly glycerol, and that reduces the freezing point of their blood. So that way they can just handle colder temperatures without freezing just because of straight up molecular biology. The second antifreeze strategy is to create antifreeze proteins. These are not sugars, they are not alcohols, they're using amino acids and have very specific shapes. These are antifreeze proteins and these are designed to bind to ice crystals. So when an ice crystal starts to form, these specific proteins bind to that ice particle and prevent it from getting any bigger. So this is how some longhorn beetles can handle temperatures up to minus 25 degrees Celsius. Guys, in laboratory settings, we store DNA at minus 20 degrees Celsius, okay? Like these beetles can handle temperatures colder than what we store DNA. And the final way that you can avoid freezing is what some columbolin and other very, very small insects do. They can handle temperatures at minus 45 degrees Celsius. At minus 40, fun fact, Celsius and Fahrenheit are the same temperature. So at minus 45 degrees Celsius, these little insects are just avoiding freezing. How? They have desiccated themselves to the point that nothing inside them can actually freeze. To do this, these insects literally desiccate themselves. They get rid of everything that could possibly freeze because water can super cool. So water can remain a liquid even well below 30 degrees Fahrenheit or, 30, or zero degrees Celsius. And that is called super cooling water. And you can see this in like those YouTube videos where people um, like pretend that they have like Elsa's frozen powers and they put a bottle of water in the refrigerator or the freezer for a long time. It gets super cooled and then they like shake it up or agitate it and then all the, all the water forms into these big ice pillars. Yeah, that's what happens when you super cool water. If you keep it, keep it very still and there's nothing for it to bind to, you can get liquid water way below the freezing temperature of water. So these insects get rid of anything that could possibly provide a substance or a substrate for ice crystals to start forming. So they get rid of their blood, they get rid of bacteria, they get rid of their stomach contents, they stop eating. If you're a certain species of columbula, you actually get rid of your entire stomach. It can't freeze if you don't have one and they will just hang out without blood, without gut contents, without really anything, and just handle the winter. And that's how they can handle temperatures up to minus 45 degrees Celsius, which is absolutely insane and really, really amazing. Like things like this is what make me love insects so, so, so much. So I hope that you guys liked this video about how insects handle cold. So just to reiterate, if it's not super cold, you can have hair and or shiver, and that will help you be out earlier in spring, later in fall, later out in the night, and that will give you a competitive advantage. You can freeze solid like woolly bears and just be solid, a solid ice brick. 
And then you start getting into freeze avoidance, which there's a bunch of different tactics. One is just to like leave and avoid it physically, either by migrating to a place that is warmer or by hiding under some shingles in someone's house. So that way you don't freeze to death in the winter. So you just physically and behaviorally avoid it. And then we, get to, we start getting into some interesting biochemistry and physiological responses by either producing waxing co waxy coatings or producing hair for ice crystals to form on that form makes a barrier between you and the ice or in the case of waxy cuticles all of your the water just kind of falls off of you and can't freeze you can create antifreeze by either having antifreeze sugars or alcohols like glycerol or you can create antifreeze proteins that bind to ice and prevent it from growing and then finally you can just get rid of everything in your system including blood gut contents maybe even your entire gut and there's really nothing in you to freeze because there's nothing for ice particles to grab onto and start making big ice crystals. So there you have it, the ways that insects handle the cold. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And my question for you is which one of these strategies were you most shocked by or did you think was most interesting? Let me know, I'd really wanna know. Let me know down there. I will see you all soon. Bye.